All right, so we got a brand new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer today that's a bit on the short side, but trust me, it is action packed. And there's a lot of cool stuff that we can go through and pick out in terms of combat and even some cool story stuff. And then we're gonna take a look at the Square Enix blog that goes along with this trailer, just to kind of deep dive a little bit more into combat and certain specifics around the game's locations. So if any of that sounds cool to you, feel free to click the like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to stick around, you can always subscribe. We cover Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, and I have a series of short going up right now just kind of focusing on games that I played as a kid and trying to review them in about a minute or less which has been pretty fun so far so you guys can check that out if you like. So starting off first with this trailer I just want to give you guys a heads up I purposely have not gone back and replayed through Remake or the original FF7 because I really want Rebirth to feel like this brand new fresh experience for me and on top of that I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> so I tend to forget things very easily, even if it's stuff that I say in videos or stuff I experience in video games, it kind of goes in my head and then comes out and then I forget about it. So there might be certain locations or characters or moments in this trailer that I don't point out. And that's not, you know, due to negligence. I'm just forgetful. <laughs> so if you guys see anything cool that I didn't mention, feel free to drop that in the comments down below, get a dialogue going. It's always cool when people start having like civil discourse in the comments and they're pointing out like, oh, this happened in the trailer I wonder if it's gonna lead to this and again just be kind to everybody you know the world kind of sucks now <laughs> so just be kind let's have some fun talking about video games because it's awesome now again this trailer is about a minute long so it is super short but man it is like a full-on Hollywood sizzle reel this is the hype trailer the appetizer before what I assume to be the launch trailer is going to be hitting soon so it's gonna get you pumped get you ready to play rebirth and again I almost didn't cover this trailer because I thought it might be the launch trailer however Square Enix usually labels their launch trailers as final trailer or launch trailer so I think we're in the clear here in terms of massive spoilers but getting to that trailer it opens up first of course with the infamous Nibelheim flashback with Cloud and Sephiroth uh, Sephiroth has just destroyed the entire town and there's this old man with a gun who unfortunately he's not gonna do anything <laughs> against Sephiroth he gets murked Sephiroth walks away in true badass Sephiroth fashion and then up next we get more shots of the singularity now it's unknown if these are shots from the main timeline with cloud and his party or if this is the perspective of zach and his timeline again that singularity event took place at the same time in all of these different timelines so we don't know for sure which timeline this is we do see like the little shinra logo in the corner um, that which we did see in the summer game fest trailer when they were showing off the stuff from zach's timeline so that's more singularity footage more questions what timeline are we in? We get more shots of Junon, and then we get a very interesting shot of Sephiroth with his sword ready and his whispers flying around him. Now, what's really interesting about this shot is the location. I don't know if this is just a quick flashback to the end of Remake where everything was kind of green inside of the Singularity and the party is fighting him, or if this is a shot near the Northern Crater. Because one of the things my goldfish brain does remember is the section in the original game where you were traveling to the Northern Crater and there was that area area where there was like this big storm happening and like you could see the wind and it was green and there was like these uh, black and greenish rocks and all of the Genova clones were headed towards reunion so I'm wondering if it might be that location because it does look very windy so if it is that spot holy crap <laughs> some stuff's gonna go down for sure up next they reintroduce Yuffie and do some really cool battle montages and then we get to see the one thing I've been wanting to see since they announced rebirth and that is the battle with the Midgar Zalem, the big ass snake creature. And you guys are probably wondering, you bring up the snake a lot from time to time in your videos. What's your weird obsession with this battle in particular? Well, I have a crippling fear of snakes. Not a big fan of them, haven't been a fan of them since I was a little kid. But there's something so freeing and satisfying about facing your fear in a digital landscape and conquering it. I'll never forget when I played Final Fantasy 15 as an adult, I went to collect some treasure, I turn around and suddenly this big ass cobra snake is in front of me and I have to do battle with it and I have to face it head on. And that's kind of the same thing here with the Midgar Zalem in Final Fantasy VII. We're gonna fight this snake, we're gonna conquer our fear, and we're gonna have a really cool fight doing it. And what also is cool is they show this really big fire breathing attack from the snake and we see Cloud do what I'm assuming is just like some clever uh, game mechanic choreography where he's flipping and dipping in the air looking like he's trying to avoid the fire. Either way, it looks pretty sick. And the area is like this 
this burned down marsh. You can see some trees are still kind of uh, on fire. The embers are flowing. You see a quick shot of Tifa getting ready to do her limit break in that spot. So that is going to be a really cool fight. I'm assuming, we, again, we don't kill the snake. That's something that uh, Sephiroth is going to do later on. But we're going to have a pretty big knock down drag out fight with the Midgar Zalem. Next, we get a shot of Hojo talking to who I'm assuming is Cloud, uh, saying he's basically like the perfect soldier. And then we get footage of Cloud just absolutely wrecking house and cutting through a number of Shinra infantrymen. And what's interesting about the shot is he's surrounded by whispers, but also the location, much like the Sephiroth one, it looks like they might be in Gungaga. They're in like this dilapidated landscape. There's this big open space where the reactor should have been, and there's a pool of Mako underneath. So I'm assuming that is what we are seeing, is the gang traveling to Gungaga. And up next are two really big, crazy shots. We see Tifa falling backwards into that empty reactor spot where all of the Mako is, cloudy is yelling out her name. So something is gonna happen there. Maybe, I don't know if it's like a dream sequence. Maybe something big goes on. Tifa falls in, we lose her. I don't know. Again, things are gonna be a little different with Rebirth compared to how they were in the original game. But what's also very interesting is that we see this gigantic weapon creature emerge from that pool of Mako. And it's not the Emerald Weapon or Ruby or Diamond Sapphire Ultimate. It's a brand new weapon, which they've teased in previous trailers. Red 13 was talking to Tifa about how these weapons are way up and they're the you know uh, defense system of the planet and they've alluded to more weapons existing and it looks like this might be one of those newer weapons it has like this big orb of uh, Mako in its chest or it might even be materia for all we know maybe it's the huge materia that the party's gonna have to get later on in the story and that would be kind of like a cool twist instead of maybe doing the submarine to look for the huge materia maybe you got to battle some of these new weapons that have the huge materia in them so you can get them but my head canon here is that there's a lot of different reactors around the planet that obviously Shinra has set up and abandoned. And you look at Gungaga in particular, that used to be a bustling town for Shinra to go to, to, to get their Mako, and it's since been abandoned. So I'm wondering if it's a situation where specific areas around the planet, certain cities that used to have reactors are now birthing these new weapons. Maybe it's a combination of the reactor being in there, all of the Mako, the experiments that might've gone on are creating these weapons that are now appearing. I think that could be a really cool twist on the story to add a little bit more to the weapons themselves, to the backstory, and have us face down these new creatures and not just be, you know, the ones that we played in the original. I think it'd be a really cool lore aspect to introduce these new weapons in these specific spots because of those reactors. I think that could be super cool. And then the final shot of the trailer, of course, it has to be Sephiroth. <laughs> and this one is very interesting because again, he's in that battle pose looking like he's getting ready to fight the party, but it's the location we're talking about here that is so exciting to look at because he's not in a reactor. He's not in the singularity, so to speak. It looks like he might be on the edge of creation. He's surrounded by a bunch of floating rock. He looks like he's in space. There's a lot of purple color. And I do remember the edge of creation looking very similar to that at the end of Remake. So it might be a situation where maybe we're headed back to the edge of creation to fight Sephiroth again. But instead of watching Cloud fight Sephiroth, maybe this is a situation where we are going to control that fight and do battle with Sephiroth. Maybe we'll have a party member join us. Maybe Zach. <laughs> One can hope that it is going to turn out that way. Um, so I'm guessing that's the edge of creation. That or Sephiroth has secretly joined Tekken 8 because this stage looks very similar to one of the newest stages in the most recent trailer for Tekken 8. I believe it's the Alyssa trailer uh, where they're just fighting in space on a big old rock with like molten pieces flying everywhere. Cool collab opportunity, Harada, Bandai Namco, Square Enix. <laughs> if you want to throw a Final Fantasy VII remake character into Tekken 8, you know, it would be cool. But as for the trailer, that's pretty much it. Again, it's very short, but it's meant to build up hype. It is super intriguing, raises a lot of questions, doesn't really spoil anything, which I really like. I really like this trailer and I kind of hope that if they do another one of these before the launch trailer. I hope it's very similar. It's just the right length. There's not too much in terms of story. Everything's still kind of vague, but all of the cool action stuff is very exciting. Now, jumping over to the Square Enix blog, some of this is stuff we already know. Uh, so they introduced things like the starboard area of Junon, which is where all of the Shinra soldiers are going to be. That's where the boat is. The big parade's going to happen there. There's also the Shinra 8, which is the cruise ship that is going to be acting as a ferry transporting people between the different sections of the continent. So we're going to be jumping on that ship essentially and going to the other side of the planet, which is going to be super cool. And of course, that's also how we get to Costa del Sol. But 
A very interesting fact here is that the blog post states, as part of the onboard entertainment of the boat, the ship plays host to a Queen's Blood tournament. So it looks like this isn't just a situation where we get on the boat, fight Genova, and then we get to our next location. It looks like it's gonna be a little beefier and we're gonna get to do some card playing because Queen's Blood sounds so intriguing. It's a very triple triad from Final Fantasy VIII. So I'm very excited to get invested into that card game. I think it could be tons of fun. Up next, they introduce, or for some of us, reintroduce Elena, who is the newest member of the Turks. Again, she and Rude are tasked with finding those robe-clad Genova clones and putting a stop to them. And of course, Elena, very young, very rambunctious, eager to prove herself. So she's gonna be very spunky. Up next, there is a new character by the name of Captain, I'm gonna get this name wrong, Titov, Titov? Titov, depending on your level of literacy, but this man is the captain of the Shinra 8. The blog post points out that he's earned a sterling reputation among his crew thanks to his un... The blog post said thanks to his unerring devotion to his duties. I don't know if unerring is a word. I don't know if that's a typo. Maybe I'm just an idiot. But again, he's the captain of the Shinra 8. Seemingly a very good person. He is also the MC of a lot of the festivities that are going to be taking place on the boat. So he sounds like he could be a pretty fun, jovial character. Maybe one of the few uh, employees of Shinra that's not, you know, a D-bag. And up next, we get more into combat, focusing on Yuffie and Kate Sith. So of course, if you played Integrade, you know how Yuffie works. She's super fast and agile. She's got her huge shuriken. She can do these elemental ninjutsu attacks, which are super cool. She's one of the more fun characters to utilize. And one of the great things about Integrate is that they took into consideration feedback from Remake and really tried to fine tune that battle system to make it a little bit more fun in terms of fighting like the flying enemies, making characters feel a little bit more mobile and agile. And that's Yuffie. 100%. Now what's super cool here, I don't recall Yuffie having this ability in the original FF7, but she has a doppelganger ability that allows her to clone herself and attack in tandem with that clone, which then allows her to exploit the weaknesses of the enemies more effectively. And this clone looks super cool. It's giving me major like Mokujin vibes from Tekken 3. It's very doll-like, but it's pretty cool to see that Yuffie's gonna bust out some more of that ninjutsu to do some cooler stuff that's not just like casting spells, but bringing on a whole new doll clone to fight in battle. And then of course they go into Kate Sith, which we did cover in previous videos. Again, you can control the cat portion of Kate Sith. You can also summon the Moogle to do battle as well. One of the ones that they point out is called Let's Ride, which allows Kate Sith to jump onto the Moogle, which then enhances his regular attacks and his abilities. So it's acting like a, a more of like a damage booster. And then of course his unique ability when riding the Moogle is a drop kick. So you can give a big old wrestling drop kick to your enemies, which is going to look very silly, but again, that's FF7 in a nutshell. Super cool and serious, but also a little goofy. And then of course, in true fashion, which is one thing I was really hoping to see in a video I made a very long time ago, just kind of speculating on, you know, what Kate Sith could be in terms of combat. It looks like he's going to be slightly a bit of a support character as well, because the blog goes on to say, once his Moogle's attacks have filled the Moogle meter, he can also buff his companions with abilities like defense. So it looks like he can add a bit of a defense boost to the party, which is the great role for him. He's like that, you know, lucky support role. And then to end the blog post, they focus on the synergy attack between Yuffie and Kate Sith, which is called the Moogle Pinwheel, which says Yuffie and Kate Sith attack in tandem with a secret ninja technique. So again, I cannot wait for Rebirth to come out. Hopefully that demo hits sometime soon. But with that being said, I am Curious Corduroy. That is the video. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think of this very cool sizzle reel trailer? Is there anything that I missed from the trailer? Feel free to point those out in the comments down below. And let me know, what moment in particular from the original FF7 are you hoping to see in Rebirth? I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.